It is time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigerian newspapers. And I begin with uh, the Nigerian News uh, Direct. The major story here says, Controversial Adamawa poll. Tinubu demands investigation. Our intervention is needless. Federal government is speaking. Uh, another writer here says, uh, Election matters. I next duty to handle. Insists 2023 general election best ever. You find all the details on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. We we'll move now to the front page of the Nation newspaper. Why Buhari didn't intervene in Adamawa poll crisis by government. And some writers here, Tinubu seeks probe of uh, debacle. NSCDC commandant summoned. You find all the details on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper. And to the first news newspaper now. Why Buhari didn't interfere in Adamawa election logjam, a federal government. Why Buhari didn't interfere in Adamawa election logjam, federal government. That's on the front page of the first news newspaper. And the writer here says, matter under INEX purview. It says matter under INEX purview. you find all the details on the front page of the first news newspaper. Mike. All right, I have the leadership newspaper here, and it says Cold War in Tinubu's house over speakership SGF COS as the chief of staff and the secretary to the governor of the federation. Cold War in Tinubu's house over speakership uh, SGF COS and Akume uh, Rufai want SGF. But Jabia Mila Faliki go go toe to toe for uh, Gambari's job, and uh, Betara moves uh, to stop Speaker from imposing successor. All right, all that on the front page of the leadership newspaper. From there, let's go to This Nigeria. This Nigeria says again, Malami Ahmed ignore $2.4 billion oil probe. House of Reps Committee issues final invitation. It vows to arrest Attorney General Finance Minister over alleged uh, payment of uh, $200 million consultancy fees. All right, all this you see on the front page of This Nigeria. Business Day is next, and uh, the big story there says Jalof costs soars to seven-year high under Buhari. Jalof rice, the debate on Jalof rice. You know, Jalof rice has that index now. Jalof costs soars to seven-year high under Buhari. That's what Business Day has. And then from there, let's go to Daily Trust. Daily Trust says high fertilizer prices threaten wet season farming. A 50 kilograms cost 30,000 naira or more. A high cost may cause food inflation. The federal government states must act now. Stakeholders are saying this. The Punch newspaper is next and it says it's focusing on insecurity. Local Rice price jumps by uh, 200%, right? Local rice price jumps by 200% and it's caused by insecurity. That's what this is saying. Uh, rice price soars from uh, 173 uh, na kilogram uh, to, to, uh, to 521 naira a kilogram under Buhari despite government intervention. NBS report as the National Bureau of Statistics. Rice farmers, producers, experts blame rice inflation, insecurity, others for rice woes. All this on the front page of The Punch. The Punch is all about rice today. Right, Blueprint is the last one we're looking at now. A reply to federal government on May 29 intensifies security operations for peaceful transition. Warns criminal outlaws can exploit 59 days gap. 1,266 residents killed, 4,973 kidnapped in 15 months in Kaduna. These all you see on the front page of Blueprint newspaper. Radhika? All right, <clears throat> gentlemen, let's look at uh, this matter on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper talking about insecurity. And uh, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Erufai, is raising the alarm uh, that the federal government needs to beef up uh, security ahead of uh, 
the hand of a ceremony, <clears throat> the inauguration of the president-elect and every other officers that need to be inaugurated at that day, uh, that um, he is saying this uh, because he received a report from uh, his commissioner of internal security concerning the state, uh, talking about renewed attacks uh, within the state. And as we have seen that after the election, there's been renewed attacks across uh, Benue, Kaduna, Zamfara, and some other states, uh, there's been renewed attacks. And he's saying that um, the government needs to look at beefing up security on the air and on the ground such that uh, these elements will not take advantage of the period we have between now and then. I wonder if there was uh, a problem with the, with the structure of the military that needed to be retweaked after the election. Mm. I, I have a sense that the had a strategy for peace in the election, and they have not recalibrated it for post-election society. Right. That, 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 that is my sense or my own um, reading of why there was an upsurge. I was somewhere yesterday in a meeting yesterday where it was debated that uh, uh, they almost reached the conclusion that uh, the reason that we had um, an upsurge of violence after the election was that the politicians had stopped paying the the criminals and so on, but uh, but the point is that uh, even during the during the campaigns, the the politicians didn't they talk a lot during this session because uh, whether whether before the election or or even during the election, because your know, talks were very useful in the snatching of ballot boxes and all of that, but. You can't go and snatch your beavers. You can't make... Some yes, attempted. Can, some yeah, attempted. Yeah, yeah, in one no, place no, they some did. Succeeded. Some, some succeeded. Some succeeded in touching... Cassina, only in Delta. Cassina, they did that. Mm -hmm. But... Um, they also did in Delta. But they, yeah, they did in Delta. Those are isolated cases, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, even those ones that they did, that did in Cassina, and then just laughed at them. They said, well, we demobilized them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you snatched it, you stole it, and then it's... Uh, useless. It's useless. It's useless. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you can't go there and now start... Uh, Changing stuff and uh, thinking that it will, it will it will work eventually. So, so we we, we I think that they need to retweak. Uh, they probably went to sleep after the that the security um, agencies probably went to sleep after that. Kaduna um, Benue has been really really have been mm. really uh, in the eye serious. of the storm. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I think there's a report that about uh, two thousand people or something have died in Kaduna. 1,266 uh, 1, residents killed, according killed. to this report. Uh, yeah. uh, 4,973 kidnapped, kidnapped in 15 months in, 15 in months. Kaduna. It's, uh, it's quite, quite some number. Mm. And uh, there have been a lot of problems. There are outcries in uh, Benue. Mm. And then we've seen um, uh, kidnap uh, incidents, uh, even in the southwest, especially around the Ogun yes. corridor, you know, uh, in the past uh, few months. So... I think that they need to wake up and um, go back to what made it uh, work uh, pre-election. Right. Mike, this, this number is quite uh, alarming. And if you also recall, um, just some days ago, I think yesterday we were talking mm -hmm. about the ladies that uh, mm -hmm. escaped, escaped from exactly. their, their captors, mm -hmm. about eight of them in Kaduna. And then we see the issues in Benue, uh, where the governor was the one that spoke, I think, two weeks ago, where he said... Uh, about 130 persons or 34 persons were killed in five days. Mm. And one begins to wonder what these persons really want. Why these killings? Uh, when we saw the pictures coming out of Kaduna the other day where there was an attack, we saw children, mm. babies being buried. In fact, it was a mass burial of persons uh, in Kaduna recently. It's quite worrying. It, it, it's, it's, it has become an embarrassing situation to government and the whole of Nigeria when... This issues of security is not being insecurity is not being handled, despite the promises, despite the assurances that the security agents give to Nigerians and the world. Mm. In fact, we've seen sometimes where they even give deadlines and time frames by yeah. which some of these things will come to an end. We've seen all of those. Yet, any moment, any moment we hear of one person being killed or one person being kidnapped, it's as bad already. For Kaduna State, we, we can't really explain 
the situation in Kaduna State, when Kaduna seemed to be the security headquarters of Nigeria. Mm. So Kaduna State has the, co the, 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 the convergence of almost so several... All the forces. Uh, all the forces. Mm. Have their either headquarters or training institute or whatever in Kaduna State. And we, 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 we expect that by that, Kaduna State should even benefit from a lot of uh, benefit from security and calmness because of this uh, the security presence of institutions this is, yeah. housed in Kaduna State. Yes. But yet we see this thing going on and on. So the point, like Sam said, something seriously has to be done in such a way that there has to be a template to create, to, to, to ensure that Kaduna is totally soaked and, and subdued under security agencies in such a way that if residents of Kaduna will benefit from the fact that, oh, because I have, uh, we have all the security agencies here, institutes here, and all of that, let it be. Because if in, <clears throat> if in, in other states you have some certain international organization or institution, or you have some certain kind of companies resident in your area, you benefit from their presence uh, in your locality. That is, what, that is what the thing is. Even in the oil region, in, in the oil uh, Niger Delta, if you have uh, uh, oil companies resident in your community, you're supposed to benefit from their being in your, in your, in your community. Mm. So the point there is that it has become an embarrassing situation to Nigeria government and, and in fact, the whole of Africa, to a great extent, if you see it, depending on how you see it, from whatever prism you see it, that we keep having this security, our insecurity issues, especially in Kaduna State. And then for, for Benue, we have seen over the last few years, the governor and the president have not been on the same page. Yeah. So the synergy <clears throat> that, is meant to, that, that is meant to be created from their working together is not there. In fact, on the, on the, on the papers today, you, you saw the back and forth between the, the, uh, the, the government and, and, and Benue State, Benue State mm -hmm. governor. So the point there is, it, it looks like sometimes politics is being played with the issues of, sec of security or se issues of insecurity. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody will say, see, when it comes to the issue of insecurity, keep politics aside. You and I, even if we don't belong to the same political party, but when it comes to governance... We should work for the people of... Uh, That's why we're there in the first place. Exactly. That's why we're here. Mm. So we, even if we disagree on certain issues, to say, okay, I don't like this policy. This policy is not right. This policy doesn't sit, there, sit well with me. But how about issues of security? Mm. If a woman in the, the, in the villages are being killed, or uh, the men in the village, or farmers, as the case may be, are being killed, how do you explain that? Because there are, there are, there are, it's a cascading consequence or repercussions or implication of farmers being killed continually. Mm. Benue State, for instance, is, is said to be the food basket, basket of, of the, the nation. nation. So anything that happens and people don't go to farm, somebody in Lagos is going to feel the impact. Somebody in Rivers is going to feel the impact. Somebody in uh, Ibadan is going to feel the impact, one mm. way or the other, because there, there, is, there, is, there is this network mm. of, of how we distribute all of these things, people benefiting from here, benefiting from there. It's the same thing with fish. Whatever happens in the Niger Delta affects uh, Abuja will feel the impact somehow. Because when fish, fish is harvested from those places, they are distributed across the country. So these are the issues. Mm. There has to be a template. There has to be something permanent that government has to do, that security agents have to do, that we don't have to only wait to get assurances from security agents or for issuing to strong be done. statements because exactly. at the end of the day, Nigerians when these are things tired happen, tired of those statements, yes, they are tired they of want it. To they, see they've, action. they've seen it over and over. Want... That is why government. Sorry, that is why when government comes up with a policy, people you hear comments from people. Eh, we've heard that before. Mm. Even if it's genuine, you say people people develop this pers pers uh, uh, pessimistic uh, approach to it because they've heard it over and over and over again. So. There is no efficacy to it. Mm. A, a lot of uh, Nigerians are tired of uh, those strong statements, like you have rightly pointed out, and uh, they just want to get see some level of action from government as it stands. Yes, there are those who will say, okay, this government, the time for this government is almost over and all of it, but something can still be done before May the 29th, where the, the incoming administration out, takes over. They came out with a five-year security plan. Yes, but Nigerians are not feeling it. <laughs>
No, it's for five years' time. No, it's, it's, it's for five after, years. It, it just came to, out now. Yeah, it just came out. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with that. Some people have yeah. mocked it and said, that, why should you do that and so on. Government is a continuum. Uh, but we know how it runs in but, Nigeria. But, 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 but this is not the plan that is important. It is what you do. Implementation. With the plan. Yeah, so, so that's, uh, that's where we are. The government is already lame duck. Uh, no matter what you say, the, the man is looking beyond the uh, asshole rock. Well, and you guys can make noise as much as you want. It's like, well, me, I, I don't my own. It's <laughs> me, I don't do well. my own. I'm not doing that. It's unfortunate <laughs> that uh, Nigerians if, have to see it from that if, prism. If, but yeah, if that, if that, if that is the, the case, yeah. if that's the mm. case, well, let's leave the conversation here uh, now.